Hey, what is up guys, and welcome back to another video, and welcome to a video looking at the HP Omen 17, HP's latest and greatest heavy gaming laptop. This isn't something to take with you everywhere you go, and for a little bit of word processing, no. This is a serious bit of kit with a GTX 1070, a G-Sync 75Hz IPS panel, and an i7 processor. Now the price of this thing in the UK is going to vary depending on the exact model you go for, as you can equip this with a lower spec uh, GPU and CPU, but the one I've got here rocks an i7 and a GTX 1070, and it comes in around about 1500-1600 pounds, but it's slightly outdated because I've got the Scarlet version, whereas the new KB Lake version is out, but performance and battery life between those are going to be very, very similar. Obviously, the KB Lake one is going to be slightly better, but this review is by no means outdated. So, what is the Omen 17? Well, it's a laptop that comes in a 17-inch form factor. It is definitely quite a big boy. It's pretty thick. Putting this directly next to a mobile phone shows that it is a very, very thick thing. Um, but if you consider it the fact that you can fit an entire GTX 1070 inside here and then you think about how big a GTX 1070 is, it actually becomes a lot more impressive. And the overall design of the unit I think looks pretty good. It is very robust as well, there's not any real flex to the body. It's not what I'd call premium as the materials used throughout are mainly plastics. You've got like a carbon fibre effect on the top of the unit but it's really sturdy and I really appreciate that. Even it's the simple act of opening up the laptop, you can do this with one hand and the hinge is really, really strong and it just makes for a really great experience when you're putting this thing um, away and then you go to set it back up again. It does remind you that this is an expensive unit despite the fact that it is fairly plasticky. On the inside you'll find a very familiar HB gaming style keyboard. It is backlit but the backlight isn't very bright and it is a red backlight which means that while it looks cool you start to realise after a few days of use that actually you'd prefer it to be just a normal white backlight that was a little bit brighter so that you could see your keys more easily. The IPS display is just that, so you're going to get rich colours and wider viewing angles as opposed to something like a TN panel, but we've still got a G-Sync uh, equipped display here, and we've still got a 75Hz refresh rate, so we're not really compromising when it comes to screen quality. Looking at the port selection on the Omen 17, we've pretty much got everything here that I would like. On the right hand side you've got the power jack next to an Ethernet socket, mini display port and then two USB 3.1s and then we've also got an SD reader as well. Moving towards the left hand side we've got another USB 3.1, the rule type A, there is no type C here and that is the only thing I'd prefer to see if they'd added a Thunderbolt equipped uh, USB 3.1 but it's not really something that most people are going to be using. And then we've got the two uh, jacks for audio, the headphone and the microphone jack, but these are slightly noisy, and especially with the microphone jack, I found that using a stereo headset, an analog stereo headset, it picked up an awful lot of static in the recordings, so you should probably be looking at getting a USB adapter or a USB uh, headset if you do plan to do some gaming and some voice over IP on uh, an external device. The speakers in the laptop are actually fairly solid and they do actually get a fair amount of volume and they actually sound fairly well detailed. Obviously you've got to be realistic, they're never going to be truly outstanding but they are actually better than I expected. If you are playing games though, do note that if you're really stressing this unit out the fans can get quite loud as you will now see. But of course, if you do decide to don a pair of headphones or a headset, then you're not actually going to hear the fans at all. And actually, I'd say that while you can hear the fans all the time, even at idle, it's at a tone and a pitch that's not actually that annoying. It's only when the fans really ramp up to the maximum that you really can start to notice how annoying they are. But compared to some of the other gaming laptops I've used, where it's just this horrible high-pitched whine all the time, actually, I was fairly impressed. So that moves us on to actually using the laptop. Well, if you do want to use this as your day-to-day -day driver, you're pretty much going to want to use this as a desktop. Add a desk, plug in a mouse, and then you are ready and away to go. 
Battery life is around about two to four hours, depending on what you want to do. So if you do want to use this as somewhat more of a portable computer, then you are gonna get a moderate amount of battery life here. If you're gaming, then of course it's gonna be significantly less. I've done a mixture of work and games. So for my work, it's mainly been writing up reviews for trusted reviews. And the keyboard on here, it's not bad. It's definitely a lot better than some of the other ones I've used. For pretty much all my work, I found this to be absolutely fine, and I don't see many people having any real complaints. Just like the keyboard, the trackpad on the machine isn't the best out there, but it's certainly gonna get you through pretty much all situations and I didn't have any problems using it whatsoever. The screen though is a bit of a mixed bag because it's an 8-bit panel and I think it looks great. It's got wide viewing angles and it doesn't matter what you're viewing on it, it always looks pretty damn good. It's got a slight grain to it but it's not really anything that I haven't seen before. And of course it's 1080p which for this screen size is ideal. Yes you can get higher res uh, screens and you can get a 4K version of this but the GTX 1070 isn't going to be enough to really drive those high-res displays, so 1080p is going to be the best option here. But of course, if you're doing some really sensitive uh, photo or video editing and you need the high resolution, maybe some cam software, then yes, maybe you should look at getting the 4K version. But while there definitely is a flaw in the display of this laptop, the same cannot be said for performance. As simply put, if you equip an i7 quad-core processor with a GTX 1070, then you're gonna get some serious horsepower out of this thing, and it can drive basically any game at ultra settings. It's quite impressive, and compared to the last generation of laptops, we've come such a long way, and this really isn't a compromise anymore. If you want something that you can maybe take from your home to university and then stick it in a bag, it's quite heavy, but you'll make do and then you'll take it between locations, that's what this thing is all about and that's really where it excels. You can get slimmer laptops out there for people that want something that is more portable, so something that has a GTX 1050 or a GTX 1060. Um, they're gonna have smaller bodies, they have lower power requirements. Um, but if you don't mind about the lack of portability, then this is actually a pretty good option and the price isn't extortionate either. In Battlefield 1, I was seeing frame rates of over 75 hertz or 75 frames a second, I should say, at pretty much all times. And when it did dip, the G-Sync technology uh, made it a lot smoother and it reduced all the stutter and the tearing that you would normally get from enabling something like V-Sync. Rise of the Tomb Raider as well, by the way all the averages should be appearing on your screen now. And Rise of the Tomb Raider as well, I went back and revisited all those tombs that I had uh, not done in my first playthrough. And while there definitely were areas that taxed the system, the average frame rate was well over 100 frames a second, at least in the benchmark. And it goes to show that this really is a no compromise machine. I know I've already said that, but I really want to stress this point. This is not something that you can take with you that can play games. This is something that can play every single game at ultra settings. That's what it's here for, that's what it's designed for. And if that's what you want, then this is definitely something to strongly consider. And of course, because you've got that i7 processor, it will handle pretty much any other task as well. If you do want to do something like uh, 8K uh, video editing, then maybe you won't be able to do it on this system. Well, you probably almost certainly won't be able to do it on this system. But you definitely be able to give it a good go. And for more normal workloads, so even 4K video editing, I don't think that this thing is going to put up too much of a fuss. Yes, again, there are laptops um, or desktops, I should say, that have got faster CPUs, but there's pretty much uh, not really much that this thing won't be able to do. But of course, it's not just the CPU and the GPU that keep this thing nippy. We've got 16 gigabytes of RAM, that should be more than enough for pretty much all applications. And then we've got two drives. We've got a standard one terabyte spinning hard drive for your game library and any mass storage. And then we've also got a PCIe SSD with read and write speeds exceeding 1000 megabytes per second, which is more than anyone should ever need. And that's probably a good time to draw this to a conclusion. This thing is pretty big, it's pretty heavy. It actually injured me when I tried to uh, do a funny bit of B-roll. I actually ended up hitting myself in the face with the laptop because it's pretty heavy. Uh, but ignoring that, I've actually been really impressed with the laptop from start to finish. It's definitely flawed in the sense that the screen had some backlight bleed and it definitely doesn't look uh, from the outside like a laptop that costs over 1,500 pounds. 
but realistically the people that are going to buy this thing they don't care they want something that can play any game they want without any compromise at all and that's exactly what this thing does overall color me impressed this wins the top purchase award as i said though this is a review of the slightly older skylake uh, model and the new KB Lake models are out. I'll leave the links down below to the new KB Lake models um, if you do want to go and check them out. A massive thank you to HP for actually getting this review loaner sample out and a massive thank you to Corsair for sponsoring the channel as always. If you have any questions leave them down below, subscribe for more videos just like this and I'll see you in the next video.